Dear viewers, hello and welcome to the third installment of my Buttman series. The title of this video is Think Beyond Boolean and today I want to show you a neat wiring trick that is as powerful as it is simple, really. It's this kind of thing that's not hard to comprehend, it's not difficult, but you just have to come up with it, you know? You just have to think of it. It's a think outside the box idea that as soon as it clicks in your head, it makes you wonder why you didn't come up with it any sooner and it instantly makes you forget how you used to ever set up your wiring differently in the past. At least that's how it was for me when I stumbled across it one day. So hopefully after seeing this video, you're going to fall down to your knees in tears saying, oh Bins, thank you, thank you. My life makes so much more sense right now and I don't know what I would have done without you. And then I can be all modest and go, oh, it's nothing. This is just my particular contribution towards making this world a better place and there is absolutely no reason to thank me. However, I will accept your flowers, chocolates, teddy bears, underwear and monetary contributions. Okay, but I'm just joking, of course. No, I'm not. And I wouldn't actually accept any gifts. Yes, I would. Okay. <clears throat> All kidding aside, I do hope this video will prove inspirational and useful to you. So let's have a look at what I mean. If I can find it, yes. I made up a hypothetical little machine here that can uh, do various things. It can give me one of four types of shapes. The first one being a regular square with one layer. There we go. Uh, a regular square with two layers. A regular square with three layers. There we go. And finally, a regular square with four layers. Okay. Now imagine that for whichever reason we want to hook this machine up to another module I have right here. So let's say that for whichever reason I would like the amount of layers on the shape in the other module to determine the, sh the, the color in which this shape is going to be painted. All right. This is, this is just an example, so for the sake of, sake of exposition, just, you know, bear with me. I'm not going to talk about how this might be useful, but the, the, the reason is, so the, the idea is that we want this shape right here, the form of this shape, the amount of layers on this shape, we want that to determine which colors this shape is going to have to be painted in, all right? So let's say that if the square has one layer, we want this shape painted red. It, if it has two layers, we want it green. If it has three, we want it blue. If it has four, we want it uh, white, all right? So how could we go about this? Well, let's get back to the other module. And we can see that, you know, in this moment, I am enabling these shapes by clicking the buttons right here. So if I click this button, then we're gonna have a shape with two layers. And if I click this button, I'm gonna have a shape with one layer. So what I could do, and let's do that to begin with, is I could hook up these, these button signals to the other machine, right? So if we have one layer, then we want our shape to be painted red, right? So I pull this I, I pull this wire all the way across and if we have a uh, a one layer signal then this is going to open up that filter and we are going to get red red shapes okay okay so let's do that for the other filters as well now I put these um, I put these two modules apart by a lot because I want to illustrate that the principle we're going to talk about might be 
um, you know, in a, a big wiring module that you have within your big factories. And we want to connect two modules that are physically far apart from each other, right? So that's why I purposefully put them apart by a lot. Okay, so this is the final wire. We go back again. There we go. So, now I see, we saw that before, if this button is clicked, we get a one signal, and the one signal actuates the other, um, the, the red die, okay? So if we enable this one, we're gonna get green shapes, all right? And if we get this one, take the last one, for example, we have four layers now, we're gonna get a white shape. See, there we go. So, the thing is, this is just a very small example with four, let's say, scenarios on the left and four possible outcomes on the right. But since shapes.io is extremely scalable, you have to imagine that we're not working with, um, with four scenarios, but maybe with eight or 16 or 32 or 46, you name it, right? And the thing is that we are also going to assume that you want this principle, you want to somehow link two modules together that are part of a huge factory of sorts, you know, like my, like my, uh, like my MAM, like my TMAM, right? This is the entire wiring module and you can see that it has a lot of, of wires. Uh, it has enough wires as it is, all right? So imagine that instead of having to pull, having to draw four wires across the map, we have to draw like eight, like eight or 16 or 32 or 64 wires across the map, right? So the trick I want to show you is that I, I am going to want to try and condense these. Um, I want to merge these wires and I want one single wire to, to run from left to right. In other words, I want to compress my wires from four to one, I want to compress them fourfold and, you know, let's call it reduce my wiring footprint, reduce the amount of real estate, the amount of space that I'm going to use in my machine. And the problem with that is, you know, you are dealing with Boolean signals and Boolean signals means one or zero. And we want more than one value on the wire. We want, you know, this combination of values. So essentially what I want is that one wire contains the signals zero, 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 one on one wire. And that would have to mean that I want to paint my shape white on the other side, right? And you have to, you can kind of interpret Booleans as answering a yes or no question, right? So in this case, the question is, should I paint the shape white, yes or no? And if the signal is one, then the answer is yes. And if the signal is zero, then the answer is no. It may help if you interpret Booleans that way. Now, here's the thing. How are we going to compress this? I'm going to get rid of the entire wiring. Because we're going to set it up again. And the question is, how can we work with these? How can we compress these signals if we only have two values, uh, one and zero? And the answer is, we don't have just two values. We have literally millions of possible values. So what I would like to do, for example, is I'm going to convert 
these Boolean signals into signals of my choosing, okay? And I can do that with a transistor. So for example, I connect this wire with a transistor and I'm going to choose a, a random value. For example, if I want the shape painted red, I'm just going to emit a red signal. Okay, in the second case, I want the, the shape to be painted green, so I'm going to emit a green signal. Okay, third one, blue signal. If my screen, screen doesn't freeze, there we go. Blue signal. And then the fourth one, I'm going to pick a white signal. Like so. Okay, now what I can do now is I, I, I can actually connect these transistors with one another. And we're also going to assume that one only one of these cases can be true. This is this is kind of important. So I I set up my my module because basically because I was lazy, I set up my module that I in a way that I could technically press two buttons at once. But I would like you to focus on the logic, right? So the the scenarios that we have is that our shape either has one layer or two layers or three layers or four layers, right? So logically speaking, only one of these scenarios can be true at the same time, right? So in that case, I can just, you know, emit a corresponding signal. If we have four layers, then I get a white signal. If we have three layers, I get a blue signal. If I have two layers, I get a green signal. And if I have one layer, then I get a red signal. And now, instead of having to pull four layers from left to right, I only have to, I have to uh, only pull one wire from left to right. There we go. So what we kind of do is we are going to code a message onto a signal, compress that onto one wire, and then at the other end, we are going to construct a kind of decoding mechanism. And the very simple decoding mechanism that I can use in this case is with the um, with the comparing unit, right? So in the first case, I'm just going to say, if my signal is red, if it equals red, then I want this filter to open up, which it does because that is the button we selected. If it is green, I want this filter opened up. If it is blue, I want that one. And if it is white, then I want that one. And we can very simply connect these wires together. And you will see that I only had to draw one line instead of four or as I said before, usually we're going to be working with more variables, so you can compress 8 wires into 1, or 16 wires into 1, or 32 wires into 1, with this specific mechanic. Because the thing is that I chose colors that logically correspond to the outcome that I want here. You know, if I, if I want red dye, I'm going to emit a red signal. But it doesn't have to be this way, so the key trick is understanding that you can assign these values completely arbitrarily. You can, you can choose which values you want to emit, and you just have to know which value corresponds to which desired action, right? So instead of sending out color signals, I might as well pick uh, other signals, okay? Let's just say that, for example, I choose the blueprint signal for this one. I choose the um, the bouquet for the second one. Okay, here it is, the bouquet. Here is the logo shape. Here is the rocket shape. And the only thing I need to do is that the decoder decodes the same signals again, right? So red corresponds to this, green corresponds to this, blue, and rocket, right? So again, 
Let's, uh, let's enable the rocket signal, which corresponds to the blue color later, right? We now have the, sorry, the logo signal. Right, there we go. And now we have a, a blue painted shape. Now again, I want to emphasize that I doubt the practical usefulness of this particular uh, of this particular module, right? But I have used this shape coding thing quite a lot in um, in my in my factory, and I hope that I will remember to point it out when we come across those wiring modules, right? So you may have machines, modules that are very far apart. You want to connect them somehow with some kind of logic. So you want the situation of one module to provoke a certain behavior in the other module. And these modules are far apart and you want to reduce the amount of wires that you have to pull across your map as much as possible. And this is how you can do it. And the thing is, you can get extremely creative with this, right? So let's say, for example, that we have two of these, right? We have two of these machines. And I want to, I want to encode the, the situations of both of them onto one wire. How could we do that? Well, all it takes is, you know, a bit of creative thinking. That's all we need. So let's say, for example, that we are going to take, for this module, we're going to take circles and we're going to work with colors. So I'm going to take a red circle for this one, maybe a green circle for this one, a blue circle for this one, and a white circle for this one. Okay, that would, that would work just fine. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. However, I am going to replace the circles with squares or something, right? So, red square for the first one, green square for the second one, screen freeze, thank you, and uh, blue square for the third one, and a white square for the fourth one. And now, because we know how Shapes.io works, we can actually get, we can actually stack this signal, right? Let's virtually stack it together and let's do it in a smart way so that we can have uh, one of two shape signals missing if we want. Um, mm -mm -mm. Let me quickly think. Smart wiring module. It's been a while since I did one of these. There we go. There. 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 No. Yes. Like so. And so. And so. And so. This is it. Okay. So now we have compressed this even more. Now we have eight values onto, we have compressed it down to one wire. And not only that, we haven't just compressed eight values onto one wire, but we have compressed two sets of four signals onto one wire. So what we can do on the other side, you know, is just what we did before, decompress it again. So let's just assume that we copy this, we copy it here, and then we can see, we can say, for example, we can analyze this wire again, and the top will be a square. So we're gonna run that here, and we're gonna do the same thing again. I think I forgot, yeah, I forgot this. So this was the um, the red circle signal, the green circle signal, 
the blue circle signal and the white circle signal. And then at the top here, let me just quickly copy this. There we go. At the, t at the top, we want the red square, green square, blue square, sorry I'm a bit clumsy here, and the white square. So, we can connect this up, and then assuming that, you know, we, we actually had proper inputs right here, I just messed it up now. But assuming we, we had connected like this proper shape and the, and the proper colors like we did here, now we have decoded our... Uh, no, not yet. We haven't yet. Not yet. But now we have. Okay, so now we are decoding two machines with only one signal. And the thing is, you have... I, I don't know how many exactly, but literally millions of shapes at your disposal. And the click I would like you to make is that this is completely arbitrary, right? You can do whatever you want with this. If you have any situation where you have a bunch of mutually exclusive scenarios and you notice that your 1 and 0 boolean just doesn't cut it, you are not restricted to just the two values of 1 and 0. You can add as many values as you want. You know, for all practical purposes, as many as you want. You literally have a few million at your disposal, because that's how many shapes there are. Okay? So that is what you can do. And now, while this is a completely hypothetical machine that probably doesn't have any kind of practical purpose, um, what I have done in the past is, for example, set up a layer counter, right? So, for example, what I did do is... Let's work with this one again. I'm going to delete my wiring to, to create some, some space. Okay, give me a second. Sorry, it, it, it took me a little while because uh, it was a long time ago that I, I built actually, I built one of these modules. It's not fine-tuned, it, it could be compressed, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, the bottom line is that I have uh, connected the unpainted full shape, uh, the full, the full for, you know, shape signals to the amount of layers by uh, with help of uh, this little module. So if we have four layers, I'm going to get a windmill signal. If I have three layers, I'm going to have a star signal. Or did I mess it up? It appears I did. Okay, just another second, please. Okay, there we go. So as I was saying, we get a star signal if I have a shape with three layers. Let's, uh, let's get the display back for extra clarity. So if I have a shape with three layers, star signal, shape with two layers, I'm gonna get the square signal. There we go. A shape with one layer, I'm going to get a, uh, a circle signal. And if I, if I have no shape at all, then I'm going to get no signal. 
See, there we go. So the key, the, the, the message I want you to take away from this is use this to your advantage. You know, think beyond Boolean. As the title of the video says, lift the restrictions of this two value, one versus zero approach, this, this cage, and break out of it, you know? Use these shape symbols to your advantage, as we saw, to compress signals onto one wire. And if you get a little bit creative with this, you can do a ton. And to give you a, a, concrete, a concrete example, is when we take some shape, let's take the rocket shape, for example. No, let's take a more difficult one, actually. Um, let's see, is this one, is this one good? Yeah, I have this shape right here, this display, right? It's going to tell me, um, it's, it's going to indicate to me, you, this one, this won't be any, any, um, this won't be informational to you, but for me, it will be uh, informational and it tells me how my machine is trying to stack exactly and out of all the possibilities there can actually be one of around 16 million different shapes on this display you know and they all connect to one and the same wire so this is a coded signal right that tells me what I want to know. It can have over 16 million uh, signals, values, literally, and it is all compressed to one wire. So use this to your advantage when you start expanding modules. And you can see that even abusing this method, I have enough wires as it is, and I've used this method I've used this technique in, in, in several occasions. So imagine how many wires I would have had to pull, how many wires I would have had to, had to draw if I didn't use this mechanic. Okay, so I guess that is the bottom line of today's video. You know, think beyond Boolean. Try to break away from this cage that the one and zero approach sets and start experimenting with shape values and the 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 core idea the, the the click that you have to make is that you are free to do whatever you want you know you pick the signals you decide which values correspond to those signals and then all the way at the other end of your factory set up a machine that decodes the signals again according to the values that you yourself have assigned to those signals. And once you get the hang of that, you will see, you will suddenly see a ton of possibilities that you previously didn't see before. So as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's it's been eye-opening like it has to me when I, when I figured, you know, my game, my factory, my rules. Take advantage of this and I hope you will, you will find this technique as satisfying as I have. And having said that, I want to thank you again for watching and I hope you're looking forward to the fourth part of my series. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.